It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Palmer. It's in Sacramento, joined by Fiona Ma. She is a member of the Board of Equalization, and you are becoming an expert on the taxing of cannabis, of marijuana. It's important. It's a product that is legally sold in our state. What happened in 1996 after the voters passed the Medical Marijuana Initiative? in terms of the taxing side of it. Yeah, so as part of the initiative, um, the requirement was that dispensaries are supposed to pay sales tax. So for the last 20 years, presumably, that we have been collecting sales tax through the State Board of Equalization. But what's interesting, though, is other prescriptions do not require a sales tax to attach. If I just get, you know, an antibiotic, I don't pay sales tax. So since we do need a prescription for medical marijuana, why is it that those are paying sales tax on, on it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think to help it pass, they wanted to create a little more incentive for so voters to vote for it. It's in the initiative. It. It's in the initiative. Got it. And therefore, they're supposed to pay sales tax, just like buying any other retail Got product it. at the stores, and they pay it to the State Board of Equalization. And so has the state truly been collecting sales tax over the last 20 years on medical marijuana sales? Well, that's what's interesting. Yes. So I started this job a year ago. Right, right. And uh, Senator Runner uh, approached me and said, Ms. Ma, we represent about 53 of the 53, 58 counties. Right. Um, he's another member of the he's board. He's another member of the board. Uh, he said, I would really like to get at the real number. How much are we collecting in sales right. taxes from how many people? Right. So it took us a good seven months oh, really? for our staff to go and calculate. Well, because when people register, they don't register. There's no cannabis right, checkoff right. box. Should there be? Well, eventually, uh, yes, right. there will be, okay. right? Um, but they're, you know, they're either an agriculture product, they're a right. healthcare product, a food product, or a miscellaneous yeah, pharmaceutical. Right. Um, so we had to really go and look at all of the periodicals, you know, the websites, try right. to match the up names. the addresses, right. the names, to see whether they were in our database and how much they were paying. Okay. So to the best of our knowledge, we figured out that in 2014, we collected $44 million from about 25% of the dispensaries. So does that mean 75% are not paying or yes. you couldn't figure it out? Well, either we couldn't figure it out or they're not paying. Oh, interesting. And a lot of folks, you know, perhaps aren't paying because nobody educated them, right. no one advised them. They didn't want to come forward because they would put themselves and, uh, in a self-incrimination right. uh, position. But are they legal dispensaries? pursuant to city ordinance, for example, like in Los Angeles, as you know, there are a certain number of dispensaries that are legal under their planning uh, provisions. Right. So, or is it all kinds that are paying or not paying? Well, I mean... <laughs> it's a wild west. Yes. Right. So for 20 years, I mean, the legislature, they didn't pass any laws. Right. And so everybody has been operating, kind of self-operating and self-guiding mm -hmm. themselves. So, you know, cities and counties, presumably, some of them have been licensed. Right. Some of them maybe have not been right. licensed. But the ones that are trying to do the right thing have been trying to pay taxes. So as you know, last year, 2015, the legislature finally passed some modicum of regulation yes. for medical marijuana, although there are some issues now because they put a March 1st deadline that's causing a lot of havoc, right. that will be remedied. But be that right. as it may, is that helping you and your office in terms of tax collection? Absolutely. Um, it's actually um, forcing a lot of folks who want to be legal to right. come out. If they want to be first in line for these new licenses, they have to show that they've been... Uh, doing you know, right. their due the diligence, right. Right. paying their taxes, and so now a lot of them are actually coming out and registering with the BOE, trying to understand what it is they need to pay. We are actually collecting more sales taxes. So, yeah, so do you have a sense by the end of, let's say 2016, even 17, aside from legalization, we'll put that aside for a second if it happens, what do you anticipate will be the revenue from sales tax of marijuana? Can you extrapolate? Um, it, it's hard to say, it right? Is. Because there's going to be different laws, whether cities and counties want uh, folks to open more dispensaries, right. whether delivery services are going to be Because we know uh, that California allowed. Supreme Court said in the Riverside case a few years ago that as a matter of land use, the cities, counties, municipalities right. can decide whether to allow the clinics to open. Exactly. Exactly. So it's going to mm -hmm. be complicated, but there are going to be like 19 different licenses. Um, 
um, presumably, you know, cultivators, right. distributors, and uh, the who dispensaries. Have and so who have everybody thunk? who wants to get in this business and get a license is going to have to, you know, register and pay taxes. So we are going to see a significant increase in taxes, I believe, in the state. Now, let's talk about potential legalization. Okay. We know that Alaska's legalized, Washington's legalized, Oregon's legalized, Colorado's legalized, DC's legalized. It's not all blue states. Alaska's pretty red and they legalize. Right. And so there's likely to be an initiative on the ballot in November to legalize. And, you know, I'm no prognosticator, but I'm going to say it could pass. And so how does that impact taxing policy, if at all? Well, if it does pass, there's okay. going to be more right. operators, right. right? And presumably more taxes that are going to yes. come in, either from sales tax or an excise tax. How is or alcohol tax? Um, alcohol is tax. It's a three-tier system, okay. which is where we're going. Uh, we're going from from a you know a producer to a distributor oh, to okay. a uh, retailer. So okay. we're going to go to that. Same. So it's taxed at three different levels. It's taxed at three different levels. But when I buy it at a liquor store, is it just a sales tax, just standard sales tax? Yes. There's no different type of tax. No, but it's built in. I understand. No, I in, got it. in the different. I got, um, I got it. In the different processes. So that's what you anticipate, I presume. Right, and it's um, you know it's going to be for profit. Because right. right now right. they're all set up as nonprofit or cooperatives. They're supposed to be <laughs> in theory, but they're going to be able to open up for profits. Um, you know, you don't know if they're going to be part of the restaurant industry, whether they're going to have you know food infused, wine crazy. infused. This I mean, it's crazy. just it's going to be a bigger market. Now, another challenge facing the uh, marijuana industry, the cannabis industry, is where do they park their money? Yes. My dad's a pharmacist. He owned a pharmacy for decades. Yeah. He had a bank. Right. He was peddling drugs, but they were legal drugs. Right. Can medical marijuana clinics access standard banking today? Well, and this is what I encountered, yeah. right? The big elephant in the room as I was doing my right. like nine-month tour right. is that legally they don't have access to the banking system Why? through the Federal Reserve. Because it's a, a level one illegal substance okay. that under the federal laws, they are not allowed to access the federal banking system. Even though President Obama has said, hands off, I'm not going to get involved in state laws. Well, that helps, but the law is if states uh, pass robust regulatory schemes, okay. then the federal government will take a more hands-off approach. When it comes to banking, they passed, you know, two, they passed the Cole Memo and they passed the FinCEN guidelines. And it basically said that banks could take, I remember this, right. could take, um, this, you know, yeah. cannabis money, but they had to do their due diligence. They had to know their, um, you know, their customers. So they're not. Yeah. And so. It's too onerous. Exactly. It's too much risk. So the, the, the global <coughs> national banks are not doing it. Uh, the smaller. Yeah, that's um, the question. The what about credit unions want to do it? Can community banks in California, are they doing it? They're not doing it right now. Really? But community banks in Colorado, for example, we did a yeah, visit did, over right. there, and they are starting to do that. Uh, they're hiring more people, using more technology, doing the whole so due diligence. So what can the board do to work with the banking industry to help this move along? Because whether we legalize or not, it's still going to be around, at least for medical purposes. Uh, I, I totally agree. Right. So we have been working you know, with the banks. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to figure out how the BOE right. can perhaps extend our depository uh, well, responsibilities because we have been taking taxes, tax money from them right. for the last 20 years, so why can't we expand it Can to at you? least allow them to pay their taxes online, whether it's the franchise tax So are order. you not able to right now? Um, we're not able to right now, that's but crazy. we are looking at it. I mean, that's one of the things I'm looking at through the BOE. And so what have you learned going to Colorado and other places, for example? Uh, well, some of the complications that they're facing, the amount of right. cash out there, the right. banking uh, problems, um, you know, access, you know, people get right. off a plane and, and they want to go someplace, oh. um, you know, we really need to be prepared for that in California. Her name is Fiona Moss. Yeah. She is a member of the California Board of Equalization. I'm in Sacramento. I'm Brian Pomerantz. It's Local Edition.